Hi, everybody. So now that we've learned about how to do all of the operations with monomials, we want to take a look at monomials that have negative exponents. Um, so this whole concept is brand new to you guys. And so what I want to show you is um, what happens when we have a negative exponent. So I may have you look at this pattern of powers of threes that I have here. So if we look at the first one, three to the third power, we know means three times three times three, and that would equal 27. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And then if I go to the next one, three squared means three times three, which is nine. And then the next one, three to the first is just three, and three to the zero, remember anything to the zero power equals one. So looking at the numbers that we have here, I want you to look for a pattern. How am I getting from 27 to nine to three to one? Each time I am dividing by three. Okay, so my pattern here is divide by three, which means if I keep going with that pattern, three to the negative first would be one divided by three or one third. If I keep going, one third divided by three, I'm gonna show you that over here, is really one third times the reciprocal, which is one ninth. And three to the negative third would be one ninth divided by three, which is really one ninth times the reciprocal, which is 127. So anytime you have a negative exponent, what's going to happen is your answer is going to be a fraction. Okay, and that fraction is always going to be a unit fraction, meaning the numerator is always a one, and your denominator is whatever your exponent is, but to the positive power. Okay, so what I mean by that is three to the negative first is the same as one over three to the positive first. Three to the negative second is the same as one over three to the positive second. And three to the negative third is the same as one over three to the positive third. Okay, so that's how negative exponents work. And that's the reason why they work that way, because you, if you continue to follow the pattern, um, it's always going to turn into a fraction because you're dividing. And that will work with any base, so you don't have to use a base of three. Um, I can show you really quick. I could have used a base of two and done the same, the same idea here. So I'm just going to show you really quick. Um, so two to the third power is eight. Two squared is four. 2 to the first is 2, and 2 to the 0 is 1. So my pattern here is that I'm dividing by 2 every time. So if I continue that pattern, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, and 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. And so again, 2 to the negative first is just the same as 1 over 2 to the positive first, and 2 to the negative second is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive second, which is 1 fourth. Um, so it's really important to understand that, but also know that you're not going to have to use that thinking every time of dividing. We're just going to use the fact that we know any negative exponent turns it into a unit fraction and makes the positive or the exponent become positive. Okay, so the first couple examples we're going to do here aren't going to have. Um, coefficients other than one, just so we can talk about how these exponents work. Okay, so in number one, x to the negative fifth, we're just going to think about our rule that when we have a negative exponent, it turns it into a unit fraction, so one is the numerator, and then in my denominator, my monomial just becomes x to the positive fifth, and that would be my answer. I just rewrite it so that the answer doesn't have any negative exponents. Okay, um, in number two, we have very similar y to the negative two, just means that I'm going to change this to one over y to the positive two. 
Number three, um, x to the fifth, y to the negative six. So in this case, x to the fifth, because that exponent is already positive, I don't have to do anything to that. Um, but what I'm going to show you is I'm going to write it as a fraction anyway, just because it'll make it easier in the end, and I'll show you why. <laughs> so x to the fifth can be rewritten as x to the fifth over one, and I'm multiplying that by, um, oops, sorry, times y to the negative six, which I have to rewrite as one over y to the positive six. So now that I have these two pieces kind of um, written out so that they both have a positive exponent, I can go ahead and just remultiply them. So on the top, x to the fifth times one is just x to the fifth. And on the bottom, one times y to the sixth is just y to the sixth. So that becomes my final answer. One thing that you'll notice with these is that um, you don't have to show that step every time. You can just realize that if the exponent is positive, it's going to stay on the top. And if the exponent is negative, it's going to go to the bottom of your fraction. So it's kind of a, a quicker way to, to do that. So in number four, let's do exactly that. Um, I can see that m and p both have negative exponents. So what that means is they're going to go to the denominator of the fraction and become positive exponents. And then the end of the third, because it's already positive, is going to stay on the top. So my final answer for this one would be end of the third over m to the seventh, p to the second. So it's really just about moving things around so that um, the exponents are positive. Okay, so number five is really similar. Um, Q has an exponent of one. Remember, it's one if it's not written. And so it's positive, which means it's going to stay in the numerator. Um, R to the negative eighth, because it's a negative exponent, will go to the denominator. And then S squared, because it's positive, will stay in the numerator. So if I rewrite this out, we're going to have Q, S squared, that's our numerator, over R to the eighth. So that 8 becomes a positive when I move it to the denominator. Okay, number 6. So now we have a coefficient here, a coefficient of 8. So the question is, what is the exponent on that coefficient? It's a 1, because it's not written. So what we do is we leave the 8 on the top, because it's 8 to the first power. And then our a to the negative 6, I move to the denominator so that it becomes a to the positive 6. Okay. Number 7, our coefficient here is negative 3. So again, what's the exponent on negative 3? It's a 1, which means it's going to be staying at the top, so in the numerator. And then my r is going to go to the bottom, and its exponent is going to become positive. Um, I do want to mention a really common misconception with that type of problem is that because the coefficient is negative, it should go to the denominator. That's not true because it's the exponent that we care about. Okay, so since negative 3 has an exponent of positive 1, that's why it's staying on the top of the fraction. Okay, so the number itself, just because it's a negative 3, doesn't mean that it goes to the denominator. It's its exponent. Okay, so that's really something to make sure you understand. Um, in number eight, my coefficient is two-thirds, and my variable is x to the negative fourth there. So I'm going to show you guys something with this. Two-thirds is already a fraction, and if I multiply that by how I need to rewrite x to the negative fourth, which would be one over x to the positive fourth, my answer is 2 over 3x to the 4th. So if you already have a fraction for your coefficient, what you can do is just put your variable in that fraction where it should go. So I know that x to the negative 4th needs to be moved to the denominator to make it a positive 4. And so since 3 is already in the denominator, I just have to move it to the bottom with it. Okay. Okay, number 10, so we're going to get into some operations here. Um, what I would recommend before you start rewriting things as fractions is to always take care of any operations that you can first. 
Um, and the reason I say that is because sometimes you will get rid of your negative exponents just by doing the operation and you won't have to worry about making things into fractions. So you'll see as we go through the next couple of lessons that that's um, going to be how I, how I tackle these problems. So number 10, I'm multiplying x to the fourth times x to the negative 12. So remember when we multiply, we add our exponents. So my answer here would be x to the negative eighth. And now since my answer does have a negative exponent, I need to rewrite it as one over x to the eighth. And that would be my final answer. Okay, in number 11, um, we're going to start by dividing. So remember, when we divide, we subtract our exponents. So n to the fifth divided by n to the seventh is n to the negative second, 5 minus 7. m to the fourth divided by m to the fifth is m to the negative first, because it's 4 minus 5. And then q divided by q to the eighth, remember this is really q to the first, so if I subtract my exponents there, I get q to the negative 7. Now I can't stop here because I can't have any negative exponents in my answer. So all of them are negative, which means all of them need to go to the denominator of the fraction. And so 1 is always on top when there's nothing left. And it becomes n squared, m to the first, q to the seventh. All right, number 12, we're dividing again. I don't know if that A has disappeared on your sheet, but there should be an A there. <laughs> so um, when we divide, we divide our coefficients. 54 divided by 6 is 9, and we subtract our exponents. So A to the 3rd divided by A to the 6th, oh, I'm sorry, divided by A to the 9th is A to the negative 6. And then C to the 4th divided by C to the 9th is C to the negative 5th. And again, we're not done because we have negative exponents still. So the 9, remember, has an exponent of 1, which means it's going to stay in the numerator of my fraction. And then my a and c are going to go to the denominator and become positive exponents. And that's my answer. Okay, 13. I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut. So... Um, this one, we have a negative exponent in the denominator. Okay, so what do we do? Because that's normally our solution to get rid of a negative exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by rewriting this. So 1 over, now if I want to rewrite x to the negative 6 to make it positive, I would have done 1 over x to the positive 6. And what happens here is we have a complex fraction. So this was like maybe day three of seventh grade. We're thinking way back. How do you simplify a complex fraction? Well, it's just dividing. So it's really 1 divided by 1 over x to the 6, which is the same as 1 times x to the 6 over 1. And 1 times x to the 6 over 1 is just x to the 6. Okay, so... You don't have to show that process every time. What you need to know is that anytime you take your monomial and you change where it is, meaning if it's in the denominator and you put it in the numerator, or if it's in the numerator and you put it in the denominator, the sign of the exponent changes. So if I saw this problem and I knew I had to make it into x to the positive 6, all I would do is change the location of my monomial from the denominator to the numerator and that would automatically become a positive exponent. Okay, so a nice little trick to know. Um, again, just by, by changing its placement in the fraction, you will change its exponent to the opposite sign. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when we have an entire monomial to a negative exponent, okay? Um, normally, when we look at something like this, we might start to think about doing, um, multiplying our exponents. I'm going to highly advise that you don't do that. Um, what I'd like you to do instead is when you see a monomial to a negative exponent, the first step I want you to do is take that entire monomial 
put it under 1 and make it so that that outside exponent is positive. So just like we were doing on the front, I'm just rewriting this so that it's a unit fraction. 1 on top, and then by putting that whole monomial to the bottom, that outside exponent becomes positive. Okay, now let's just say that we had a negative exponent inside the parentheses. That would not change the sign of that exponent. Okay, so the only thing that's allowed to change is that outside exponent. So now what I'm going to do is just simplify this. I have 1 on top. And remember, our rule for when it's a double exponent like that is to multiply. So a to the first to the fourth power is a to the fourth. And b squared to the fourth power is b to the eighth. And so that's my answer for that one. 15 is pretty similar. Um, so I see I have this monomial raised to a negative exponent. So my first step is going to be to rewrite this whole thing. But now it's to the positive ninth. Okay? And then we can go ahead and simplify that. So c to the third to the ninth power is c to the 27th. And d to the fifth to the ninth power is d to the 45th. That would be my answer there. Okay, 16 and 17 um, are very similar to the last two, except that our coefficient here is not 1. Okay, and these are the type where it is so, so important to follow the process that I'm showing you because so many times people will say, oh, 3 to the negative third power, that's negative 27, and it's not. Remember what I showed you on the front. 3 to the negative third power is actually 1 over 27. Um, so again, that's why I'm showing you the process that I am. So first up, we're going to take this monomial and rewrite it. And we are going to make it so that our exponent is now a positive 3. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify it. So um, 3 to the third power is 27. And then we would have x to the third, y to the third. And that would be my final answer. 17, same idea. I have this entire monomial to the negative second power. So I'm going to start by rewriting it as 1 over negative 5xy to the third. But now that outside exponent becomes a positive 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and square that denominator now. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. And then I would get x squared y to the 6. Okay, number 18 is what I showed you back on, I think it was number 13. So in order to make this into a positive exponent, all we need to do is change the location of our monomial. So by putting it on top, I have my final answer. Okay, number 19. So this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, we have a couple different operations going on here. We have some negative exponents, and then eventually we need to multiply our two monomials together. So again, my advice here is to start by rewriting everything so that there are no negative exponents. Okay, so my first step is going to be to rewrite that first monomial as a fraction to the positive second power in the denominator times... Let's do the same thing for the second monomial. So I'm just rewriting it. Now that's to the positive third. And then what I would do is I would go ahead and simplify your denominators. So this would become 1 over q to the fourth m to the sixth times 1 over q to the twelfth m to the twenty-first. And then our last step would be to multiply. So the numerators, 1 times 1 is 1, over q to the 4th times q to the 12th. Remember, we add our exponents when we're multiplying, so q to the 16th. And then m to the 6th times m to the 21st would be m to the 27th. So that's my final answer there. All right, let's take a look at an application here. The radius of a circle is 2 thirds x to the 7th y to the negative first inches. 
express the area of the circle in terms of x and y. Leave your answer in terms of pi. Okay, so we are being asked to find the area. When it says in terms of x and y, remember that just means that you're going to have an x and a y in your answer. Um, just like it says in terms of pi, you're also going to have a pi in your answer. So what we're going to do is we'll start with our area formula. And what's kind of nice here is that um, we're already given the radius, so I don't have to do any dividing or anything. So let's go ahead and plug in what they tell us our radius is. So pi times 2 thirds x to the 7th y to the negative first, and we're squaring that. Okay, so one thing I want to say is that this is different than the others that we've done because I now have a negative exponent inside of my parentheses versus the negative exponent being on the outside. So when this happens, I go ahead and I actually do the squaring first, okay? Because my outside exponent is positive, that's how I'm going to start this. So I'm going to say, okay, 2 thirds squared is 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which is 4 ninths. And then x to the 7th squared is x to the 14th. And y to the negative first squared would be y to the negative second. Okay, so at this point, you can now go ahead and rewrite that um, monomial that you have in parentheses so that there aren't any negative exponents. So when I do that, I'm going to have um, the 4 and the x to the 14th would stay in the numerator. And then the 9, which is already in the denominator, now gets the y to the positive second. So I just moved the x and the y into the um, fraction 4 ninths that was already there in the appropriate places. And then, because it's in terms of pi, I'm also going to have a pi on the end here. Now you can put the pi kind of in the middle like I just did, or you could put the pi in the numerator, because technically it's pi to the first. Um, either one is fine. And then, oops, this is inches, not units. And that would be your final answer. Lovely. <laughs> okay, two more. We got some mixed operations here. So for 21, I would recommend let's take care of our, um, our exponents that we have. So I'm going to start by rewriting this first monomial since it's a negative exponent. I'm going to make this... 1 over x to the third to the positive third times, now this other one, I don't have a negative exponent, so I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate that right away. So negative 2 to the fourth power. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16 and then y to the 5th to the 4th power is y to the 20th. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that this is over 1. Okay, so if I go ahead and multiply this out on the top, I get 16y to the 20th. And on the bottom, I should probably take care of this before we move it, um, x to the 3rd to the 3rd power is x to the 9th, and x to the 9th times 1 is just x to the 9th. All right, last one. So I see that I have this monomial, the entire thing, to the negative third power. So I'm going to start by rewriting it as negative 3x to the fourth, y to the fifth, but now to the positive third power. And then we can go ahead and evaluate that. So 1 over negative 3 to the third power. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. x to the 4th to the 3rd power is x to the 12th. And y to the 5th to the 3rd power is y to the 15th. And that is it. Awesome job.